Howdy, everybody. So today we're going to pick up with a quick discussion of the Bill of Rights. Just to make sure we're all on the same page, we kind of get a general idea of what each means. And on top of it, we have a discussion board about this as well. So, Bill of Rights, remember, this was one of the tools that the Federalists used to persuade the Anti-Federalists to help them pass the Constitution. So make sure you remember that component up too. That's why we had them in the first place. Now, when different amendments were being proposed, there was a lot more than 10, but they narrowed them down. They pick and chose the kind of most important ones, combined similar ones, and eventually it got narrowed down. And of the final few, these 10 got passed. So we're gonna go one by one because it's important you know, as good American citizens to know what each one is and how they apply to our life. So first and foremost, freedom of speech and religion. So this one's pretty obvious. Freedom of speech, you can say whatever you want. Freedom of religion, you can worship however you want. Whatever God, whatever form or function you want that to take. Now, whenever we talk about freedom of speech, we think, oh, I can say anything I want. And yeah, you do have the right to say pretty much whatever you want. But just because you have the right to say it doesn't mean there's not going to be any repercussions for it. So you can't just call someone an asshole and maybe not get punched in the face. So there are going to be repercussions if you do certain things. So just because you have the right to do it doesn't mean there's not going to be a consequence for you doing it. So this is typically focused at like freedom of the press, the right to protest, different things like that. So today we talk a lot about hate speech. Is hate speech a form of freedom speech? And this is where it gets a little murkier. Like, does someone have the right to say it? Yeah, but if they're threatening someone's life or threatening someone's liberty, then you're kind of confronting and challenging those natural rights, which are granted in the actual constitution, not just an amendment. So keep all of that in mind. Remember, in the constitution itself, you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So that's kind of the goal of the nation. No Declaration of Independence, Constitution. This is what these documents are trying to outline is these aspirational goals for the nation. Right to bear arms. Now, we live in Texas. This is a very popular one. Now, we're going to go by this very carefully because many people in Texas and across the South and heck, across the whole nation think the right to bear arms means I can own as many damn guns as I please. And yeah, technically, you can own a gun. There's nothing, I mean, that's part of the right to bear arms. But when this was created, there was an interpretation at the time of why you needed that gun. Keep in mind, this was only a decade or two after the American Revolution, where they just had to fight and overthrow a tyrannical government. So if you actually read the text of the amendment, it says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So they're saying you need the right to have guns to become part of a militia. Now the militia is what, so the militia of you know the 1700s when this was created equates to the National Guard of today. So if you join the National Guard, that's basically our militia. So the intent of the time period was a little different than how we interpret it today. It's not that today's interpretation is wrong. It's just you got to understand the historical context. They were saying people need to be able to own guns. So whenever the time for the militia to go to war happens, they have guns to do so. It's not just so you can depend, defend your individual liberty and defend, you know, from home invaders and stuff like that. Well, those are all valid reasons. That's not the goal or wasn't the original goal of this text. So just keep that in mind. So whenever you're talking about this and debating people whether or not we should or should not have guns, all this kind of stuff, at the time it was an absolutely essential thing, but they were only 15, 20 years removed from having to fight a seven or eight year long war against the British. And many of those people having to use their own guns to do so. So just keep all that in mind. No quartering. So this is a direct reaction to the Quartering Act during the American Revolution. This is where they put soldiers in houses. So there shouldn't be ever a soldier housed in your own personal home. They can take other things like warehouses and turn those into housing for soldiers in times of war, but no one should ever be put in a house without the consent of the owner. 
So no unlawful search and seizure. This means if someone wants access, in particular cops want access to your house or your car or even your person, they have to have a warrant. Now you do have the probable cause clause, which that's where it starts getting a little murky. They can claim, oh, I saw something. I saw a gun sticking out or I saw, you know, something shady happening. Maybe. But if they knock on the door or pull you over and they're like, I'm going to search your car or I'm going to search your house. You can say no. You can say, please show me the warrant you have to search my house. And on that warrant, it should very clearly state what they're looking for. So make sure you read the warrant. So, just be very careful. Now, whenever you do say no, be polite, because you're saying no probably to someone with a gun. And as we've seen in recent history, depending on who you are, that could go very poorly. So just keep in mind who you're dealing with, the context of your neighborhood, your environment, how your community police work with their citizens, all this kind of stuff. You gotta take all of this into context to determine how you deal with someone. Now, whenever you're dealing with anyone with a gun, whether it's a police officer or anyone else, calm, polite, no sudden movements, these are the best course of action. So just be careful. You have the right to say no, but be conscious about how you do so. Okay, let's move on. No self-incrimination. So whenever you see on TV shows, movies, when they say, I plead the fit, Basically, you can say, I'm not going to say anything. I don't have to answer that question because it's going to make me look bad. You may not be guilty, but maybe the context in which you have to answer that question might make you look, you know, possibly guilty. Or it looks like you had different intent than what you actually did. So you can say, I'm just not going to say anything. So whenever the cops arrest you, your Miranda rights, the right to remain silent, that's where this comes from. Or that's where that comes from. So you have a right to a trial by jury. So in theory, they can't just lock you up and throw away the key. They have to tell you what you are accused of and put you on trial. And they theoretically have to do it in a timely manner. There are loopholes, people fall through the cracks all the time where they're arrested for a crime, they're told what it is, but their trial just keeps getting pushed further and further and further back. Our criminal justice system is fundamentally broken in some key ways. Now we'll be talking about those this semester, and if you have me in the spring, we'll be talking about it a lot more next semester. So trial by jury in a federal court. This one isn't as valid anymore. Now federal courts tend to be more appeals courts than anything, but you will have a federal court jury trial every once in a while, but this is not as valid anymore. So no cruel or unusual punishment. So you shouldn't have crazy bails, you shouldn't have any weird punishments, although even after this was passed, you had things like the electric chair, which literally electrocuted you until you died. And it was super painful and super cruel. But nonetheless, so in theory, this is supposed to direct the government, direct states, direct people away from cruel or unusual punishment. So get away from weird stuff to cause punishment. So you're not gonna get put in the stocks anymore not going to have your head and hands clamped in wood and stuck in a city square so people can throw tomatoes at you. Not going to happen anymore and shouldn't happen anymore. Although with social media now, we do get a little bit of that same kind of crucifixion kind of image with certain people whenever they are getting canceled or anything else. So number nine, this was designed to guide the interpretation of the Constitution. It's not terribly valid anymore. It kind of works, but kind of doesn't, How depending how people read it. But the last one, number 10, this one is super valid. So any rights not stated are held by the people or the states. So the Constitution is not a catch-all. It is a limited thing. So only what is stated in the Constitution, that is the only powers the federal government has. If it's not clearly and verbatim stated in the Constitution, then either the states have that power if they've claimed it, and if they haven't claimed it, all remaining power is with the people. 
So the people hold the bulk of the power. And this is where you get that social contract. So the people give up a little bit of their power so the federal government will have certain powers to be able to protect them, to protect their life, liberty, property, pursuit of happiness, all that kind of stuff. Same for the state. We give up a few of our powers. So this is why we get taxation, because the states, you know, supply us with a police force and supply us with roads and different other infrastructure. So all these different things that the government provides, we're giving up a little bit of our power in exchange for certain protections or benefits. Now, if those benefits ever get out of whack, that's where in the Constitution it states we have the right to rebel. So we can challenge that. So that is the first 10 amendments, the Bill of Rights. So if you have questions on any of those, please feel free to let me know.